Welcome to the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. My name is Lars Fontine and each week on Monday we have a short session on cycles and cycle analysis. Today's topic is about the dynamic nature of cycles. That's an important point to make for today. So we will not review market cycles. I will talk a little bit about the dynamic nature of cycles. Um, as we all know, uh, cycles in nature are not perfectly even and static. So the mathematic of cycle analysis suggests that cycles are perfectly even and constant static into the future and in the past, which is not the truth if we deal with natural cycles which are all around us. Um, and that's important if we do the uh, um, a digital signal processing and uh, ramp up the cycle scanner, you need to know that the cycle scanner is using the mathematics uh, uh, to detect cycles, which always works on the assumption that cycles are static and perfectly even, which is not the case in nature or even in most cases. For sure there, there might be some static cycles, but in most cases, if we deal with our natural environment, they are not static, they are dynamic. And we need to find a way to deal with these dynamics, especially when we do cycle projections. Okay, so that's the topic for today. So the next 15 to 20 minutes, I will show you some examples, what it means when I talk about the dynamic nature of cycles. So let's get into it for today. You see here already on the screen, um, I will use today's session, we will see a, a red cycle and a gray cycle here on the chart, um, which where the gray cycle is equal to a static cycle, so it will not change, it stays static all the time. And you will see a red cycle which is slightly varying around some parameters, which will I explain in a second to you. Um, and the red cycle is the dynamic cycle, which is, which is more what we observe in, in uh, our nature here. Um, and you see that the red cycle is moving, morphing, varying around phase length and shifting. And um, here you need to take um, care of the this line here yeah, in the in the middle, which which just for the explanation of today is is the time point of today. So if we go then uh, back into the past, whoops, which is here, um, this is the past and there's the future, right? So beyond this gray line is our projection area where we do our projection and past this line um, in this year is, is the past where we did our analysis on the cycle. Yeah, just to explain how this works for today. So, and if we have a closer look on This animation now shows you um, one component, which is here now um, moving around the main parameter of this cycle, which is the phase. So the red cycle um, shifts in regards to the phase, which means, and this is easily spotted here on the chart, that the top and the low of the red cycle varies in regards to the time. So when the top or the low of this cycle might happen. You see the cycle length is not changed here at this time. So the length is static for the whole time and not only the phase is shifting. But you see um, even if you are able to detect the cycle based on the length with the correct length setting um, and if you have a look into the projection area past the line, you see that it also depends on detecting the correct phase of the cycle to get a clue on the next top or bottom of the cycle. So this also highlights that the cycle length is not the only important one because in most cases I see people talking about the cycle length, which is one component, but if you have the phase wrong, 
the projection is worth nothing. So the second component is the phase and you need to be aware the phase of these kind of cycles does not stay constant, yeah? which means you did a cycle analysis at one point in time and the phase is also derived. So, and then maybe you get new data which comes into your um, um, data set um, and you must update your analysis because the current phase might have cha changed. So that's point one. The second point is um, you need to analyze the current past in regards to detecting the correct phase. So for, for detecting the cycle length, you might need a longer period and time to detect the um, um, length. But if you have too much data in your analysis, then the phase detection will just be the average from the data set you analyzed in the past, which might be good looking into the past. It's, it's similar to curve fitting uh, an indicator or strategy to the past. Uh, so the more data you use, the, the better it looks on the history and the better the phase is aligned to the past data. But as we know that phase is shifting, we need to know what is the current phase of the last 100 data points, because this will give you a clue um, on the projection area for the phase. That's important. So that's point one, the phase is shifting. So that's just one, one part of the truth. Um, there is also a second story. This is about the shifting of the length, which I will now um, get into with you. So this is the phase and let's, let's now look at length shifting, which is shown here. So now we see the same procedure. The gray static cycle is kept static from the past and our future projection area. And the red cycle is now morphing around different length. So, and, and the effect is here that uh, if you change the length just slightly, just slightly. It's, it's not a big change which happens here. You see how this impacts the deviation of the tops and the lows in our projection area. You see that the, the first cycle top on this chart here is, is more or less fixed yeah? because that's, this, that's the starting point. But um, if we then vary the length, uh, the more you go into the, the, the future projection, uh, like, like, whoops, this area here, yeah, you can observe that the deviation between the red and the gray um, at the top projection, which is the timing point, which is important for us, the deviation gets quite larger. And if you then look at the second uh, projection in the future area, which is uh, past the first one, the deviation even gets larger. So the more you go into the future with your projection, uh, uh, accepting the length shift here, the more you will be off in projecting future, future turning points. And that's also a topic why I always say, n if you do a cycle projection, never look past the next one or two projected uh, uh, turning points of a composite. Because due to the extraction and contraction of, of the length of the cycle, the deviation, the more you go into the future, will be higher and higher in regards to the projection. So the projection will get bad the more you go into the future. And I think you can clearly see this from the behavior here of the um, red and, and gray animation, which you see here. So this is now just changing the length. The face is, is not changed here. And um, even though this is a different length here, you can call this the same nominal cycle. Yeah, this phrase is always used also from Hearst when we talk about nominal cycles, that the, the static or the gray cycle is here representing a nominal cycle with a length of, I don't know, let's assume 100 hours or 100 days. And the red cycle is now just the uh, dynamic component that the length might shift from 95 to 105. Yeah, this is why it uh, is extracting and, and con contraction. Um, and based on the length. But even though if the cycle is now the length from um, 95 to 105, it is still a nominal cycle with a length of around 100 
days or hours, whatever you analyze. So it's not a different cycle. And you see now how important that is that even if you deal with a nominal cycle about 100 days, depending on your data set, uh, it is important that you get a clue what's the current dynamic status of this nominal cycle. Because you see how this will influence um, the data, whoops, uh, no, whoops, <laughs> the, the, the data past the projection line, right? So this is, this is very important to get the dynamic composite right. Otherwise, the deviation between the theoretical gray and the real red behavior is off. And I think this is what you will often see in your analysis, that you do an analysis and then in the future it's, it, it's not projected right at the right time because at the point you do the analysis, it's a static analysis, but the cycle will continuously change based on the dynamic component of phase and length. So now let's combine both effects. Yeah, We just had a look at the phase and the length shifting, but both happens in parallel. Yeah, So now I will um, switch back and we will have uh, a look at um, how this will look like when we now turn on both effects um, in parallel. And this is now the combination of both dynamic components, right? So we have now length shifting, so contraction and expansion of the cycle length, in addition to changing the phase, so the offset of the tops and lows in the market. And this is now, the, the red cycle now represents what happens in, in our real life where static cycles are not there, so they are dynamic, they change their parameters, where the gray cycle is a static projection which is not changed. And the more you go into the future past the projection line, you see that the deviation of expected tops and bottoms will get higher and higher the more you move into the future of your projection. So when this should uh, show you, and that's the purpose of this session here, that one thing is to detect cycles in a data set, which different forms of Fourier and digital signal processing are able to do so, like we do with our cycle analyzer. But that's not rocket science. There are lots of programs which can do this. Now the knowledge and final topic which needs to be solved is the dynamic nature of cycles, which is not handled by standard digital signal processing as said, because the mathematics behind this assume that you have data sets with static cycles, which we don't have if we deal with these uh, natural cycles, which are more rhyming or rhythm or not completely uh, circlic, more elliptical, um, not clearly sine wave, they are mor morphing. So, but that's, that's reality and we need to deal with that. How you deal with this in the cycle analysis, that's why we meet here every Monday because we want to understand how to, how to tackle this situation. And um, one key takeaway which you have in mind, and, and please think about your projection lines and what the dynamic can change in your projection lines, um, you need to update your analysis regularly. So this is point one. You should never do a static projection and then trust it forever. Um, new data comes in. This will give you a new clue how the dynamics might have changed. Point one. Point two is never use too much historical data because the more historical data you, you use, the better will be the cycle length and phase detection for the overall historical data set, which is from a scientific perspective really useful. But if you want to get a clue on the current future or the near future of the data set, you need to get the dynamic composite as exact as possible. So the more data you use for the past, you get the nominal cycle information, nominal cycle information, um, which is averaging the historical data set because it's not taking a weight on, on the current past. That's nominal cycle analysis. If you want to use this to derive some 
findings for the near future, near future, uh, you need to understand that this is taking just the past average phase, average length. If you want to do projections in the near future, future, you should use more the current past and not too much history in your data set. Because if you use the current past, this will in most cases also reveal the nominal cycle, but more aligned to the current length and the current phase. So one example, if you use lots of data in your historical data set, it might reveal a nominal cycle of 100 days, right? So then you should shorten the analysis, maybe just to using the last three years of, of data instead of 30 years. And the last three years might reveal a cycle with 97 days. So then you have it. The nominal cycle was revealed based on long-term analysis, 30 years of data. And then using just the last three years reveals a cycle with 97 days, which confirms the nominal cycle of 100 days. But now you know that in the current environment, it has morphed to a length of 97 days, which is much more important for your projection area because that's where you're interested in. Same to the face, right? So I hope this session gave you a little bit uh, understanding about the different uh, views on static cycles uh, with a lot of historical data in the analysis, which is then also taken as average or nominal cycle information and what you need to do if you do near future projections based on these cycles and how to take the most current dynamic behavior and to differentiate uh, these two terms. Um, I hope this helped you a little bit in today's session and you like this uh, topic. So please think about this dynamic component as it is a very important aspect for cycle projections. Thanks for staying with me today and up to next session. Bye. Thank you.